Let's go ahead and get ourselves all set up. I have Aaron, Isis, Kasia, Maddie, Naziah, Nyasia, Tisa, and Ziara on the Nearpod. Let's make sure we are getting on there so we can be successful in class. Great. I have nine people in the Nearpod and I should have 16. So let's get all logged in, ready to go. Um, please let me know if you need um, help getting on. If there is a issue since it's the start of class, I will share the link into the chat once. It is also in the Google Classroom assignment. Take the next 30 seconds to get there. Great, I have Ariana on here and I have Yamani on here now. Okay, let's make sure we are on the Nearpod as we get ready to start going through our expectations. As always, make sure you are all in your attendance and cold call responses are impacting a quiz grade. Remember, responding to a cold call is the easiest 100% you can get. Just make sure you are paying attention and prepared to respond. As always, our Zoom expectations videos on, microphones off, and only use the chat when prompted. You guys are great with this, just a reminder. And um, Google Classroom is where you can find all of the assignments and Nearpod links. Remember, I'm putting the Nearpod links in the Google Classroom assignment before class, so you can uh, log in and get set up beforehand. Um, as a reminder, your homework was due this morning. Please make sure if you can get that to me by the end of the day, I will not count it as late. So, and by end of day, I mean 11.59 p.m. So if you did not turn in your homework yet, please be sure to do so by the end of the night and I will not count it as late. And finally, make sure you set up a constructive learning space. I recommend using a Chromebook and be in a comfortable place where you can read through the classwork documents and complete a chart. Okay, let's look at our materials and our agenda for the day. Um, Yamani, can you please read our materials for the day? And Janika, Janiqua, can you please read the agenda for the day? Um, paper, writing utensils, Google assignment pulled up, near pod access, link available, and Google assignment. Um, norms and agenda, do now lecture, constitution analysis, exit. Great. Um, sorry, I forgot to revise the agenda. Today we are going to be going over uh, one of the Federalist Papers and one of the Anti-Federalist Papers and doing some discourse around that. Um, great. Let's go ahead and transition to our do now. You will have five minutes to complete it. It is the one that is labeled 9.16.20 U1L6 AP Gov do now. And the first question is, what are the key flaws of the Articles of Confederation? You will have five minutes to complete this due now. Five minutes to complete. Go ahead and get started.
I have Isis and Isaiah's responses. You have three more minutes. Casey, I have your response. Make sure for the multiple choice question, you are not confusing separation of powers with checks and balances. Uh, Janiqua, Erica, I have yours. Ninety more seconds. I have responses from Tisa and Ariana. 30 more seconds, go ahead and start submitting your responses if you have not done so yet. I have seven responses, I should have 20. Thank you, Janiyah, thank you, Dwayne, thank you, Ariana. Okay, go ahead and press submit on your response, even if you did not have the chance to finish it. I want to make sure you got through the first part of the do now. Okay, I have 10 responses. 11. 12. Again, if you did not finish, that's okay. I just need to make sure you got through the first part. 13. Waiting on seven more. 15, five more. I need responses from Serge, Sergio, Jamal. Yes, Aaron, I got yours. Thank you, Serge. Still waiting on three responses. Okay, make sure you get those responses submitted so you can get those points. Today, we are going to be discussing 
two um we're going to be discussing the two documents that we started reading last week which is federalist 10 and brutus 1. and these are two of the most famous writings um, along the road towards the ratification of the constitution so why do you think the anti-federalists use the title of brutus for their defense against the federalists why would they use the pseudonym or the nickname of brutus i'll take a hand yes niasia because it sounds like brute which means like violent and rough and so if they have violence associated with the federalists the people will be less likely to support the idea of a strong national government mm -hmm. okay i like that inference i'm going to push us back to our ap world history what other famous character is named brutus take a hand Okay, I will remind us. Uh, Brutus was a politician of the late Roman Republic, and he was the man that was uh, the leading role in the assassination of Julius Caesar. And the Federalists, the Anti Federalists, are using the term Brutus as a warning, which is if we adopt the Federalist plans, it is going to topple the new American Empire. As we've seen, the American minds of the day conducted these heated debates. The writings of influential political leaders such as James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, and George Clinton outlined the basic arguments for and against the Constitution, as well as for and against a strong central government. We want to go back before the compromise that became the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and look at their early arguments for and against the ratification of the Constitution. This is because these arguments are still existing between Democrats and Republicans in the United States today. And you are probably going to recognize some of these arguments in the president, upcoming presidential debates. Also, these two documents are ones that you have to master in order to do well on the AP exam in May. I'll give us 30 seconds to transition to today's classwork document. Give us 15 more seconds to pull it up. What are we pulling up again? The classwork document. Oh, I got it. In creating the framework for our current government system, the framers designed a structure that enabled citizens to participate in our democracy. By proposing the Constitution, the framers asserted that the best way to preserve the rights of citizens and add stability in the nation was to create a large representative democracy. That would mean that citizens would be less directly involved with national laws and policies but it would require them to elect officials to represent them in government. Today, we're going to be reading James Madison's Federalist 10, also the primary architect of the Constitution, where he argues that the Constitution creates a government that appropriately engages citizens in their government. We're then going to see the response to this in the document Brutus 10, and we will, should be Brutus 1, uh, in the document in Brutus won, and we will debate which argument makes more sense for our new nation's government. So we are going to be reading portions of each of these. You'll notice on page one of the classwork document, you have a chart where you can chart notes answering this question 
analyze the arguments of Federalist 10 and Brutus 1. Why do they support or oppose the ratification of the Constitution? So again, you have uh, portions in, on page one to chart your responses, and we are going to chunk these documents. You are going to have six minutes to independently read Federalist 10 and add your notes into the chart. Again, you are going to have six minutes to read Federalist 10 and add those notes. I will be popping in and out. Sorry, I will be popping in and out of your Google documents so that way I can ensure that you guys are taking uh, proper annotations. Six minutes on the clock for Federalist 10. Make sure you add those notes to your chart. Go ahead and get started. three and a half more minutes.
90 more seconds. Again, make sure you're including in your chart what the um, your response. So while you're reading Federalist 10, make sure you are charting why it supports the ratification of the Constitution. Thirty more seconds. Go ahead and finish jotting down your last thoughts on Federalist 10. Great. I am going to be sending you into breakout rooms and you are going to be reviewing why the Federalists support the ratification of the Constitution. You are going to have three minutes in your breakout rooms. I want the person whose first name comes last in the alphabet to get you started. So the person whose uh, first name comes last is gonna start you all out. You have three minutes. Go ahead and accept those invites. Aaron, Jade, Yamani, Dwayne, can you guys accept those, please? Thank you, Aaron. I didn't get an invite. You didn't? Uh, more breakout rooms. It says that you should. Okay, don't accept anything yet. Did it come up now? Uh, Dwayne, can you accept your invite, please? Jade, can you accept your invite? Okay. Um, Lauren, I'm gonna leave you in the main room so you can read over Federalist 10. It's on page two of your class document. Lauren, are you there? They said that um, having the Constitution will cause less arguments due to having um, representation by other people. And then they also said that if they wanted to do it the other way, having too many representative causes the- um, It sounded correct to me. I don't know. I don't know what he was talking about in the passage. So I agree with whatever he just said. I agree too. I thought the balance was between like Republican ideas and Democratic ones. That's what I thought the balance that he was talking about. And that's probably why he supported it. But other than that, yeah. 
that's what I got from out of that. Well, I feel like I could be a little off track, but I mean, I still just thought that he was in a way talking about direct democracy. So, I mean, I could be, could be very wrong. <laughs> Is he for or against direct democracy? I think he's um, against it. I think he's saying that uh, the Constitution kind of helps with um, not having, like, I think, yeah, he, like, not having t- one faction, like, hold more control, mm-hmm. or something like that. And so, I mean, that's what I got from it. I don't know if I'm, like, on the right track or anything. But, um, yeah, I think he's just saying, like, he's direct democracy is not really um, a good idea. And it's kind of a threat. And the Constitution helps with balancing that out. Isis, Ariana, we talked about, in Adarius, we talked about this a lot last year. Who else was worried about factions? Who else was worried about, like, groups of people's interests, like, taking over? Are you talking about, like, a specific group of people, or? A specific person. Who else warns against factions? Is it, um, wait, other than Madison? Other than him? My historical boyfriend. George Washington. Washington. There we go. Because which speech does he give that advises? Emmanuel, you should know this from Hamilton. What speech does he give that advises against political parties? The farewell address. Farewell. And remember, he's also a closeted federalist. Um, that was a weird way to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Something I really like is Emmanuel pointed out that issue of direct direct democracy. Look at the third from the bottom like paragraph. It's like one sentence. But he says whether uh, the Madison says whether small or extensive republics are far more favorable to the election of proper guardians of the public wheel. What does he mean by proper? Go ahead and discuss that. What kind of democracy would ensure proper people are running the government? Hey, Miss Wild. Um, I'm sorry, my sound. I can't. Oh, you're you're muted. Um, what's up? Okay, I was con- I My sister said that you're calling my name. I had walked away for a second, and I'm sorry about that. Mm-hmm. I was in the middle of getting myself dressed, and then running and like trying to just multitask. So she, when you called me, she went in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. She freaked out. She said that you turned the camera on on her. I'm sorry. I didn't turn the camera on. Or I don't know what happened. I have little kids over here also. I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure everybody else is doing the right as well. I'm sorry. But I no, thought no. I got exited out of class. I'm like, um, how? No worries. Great. So now that we are back, we are going to transition and looking at, and we are going to look at Brutus, which is the anti-federalist document. But first, before we do that, I want to ask, who else warned the United States about factions? What other historical person that I have a very big fondness for warns people that political factions are a bad idea? George Washington. George Washington. George, what the? (laughs) <laughs> see this is why i say ridiculous things like historical boyfriends because y'all remember when i say ridiculous things 100 um okay so and remember washington is a secret federalist he doesn't want to say he is a part of a political party because he knows that that's a bad idea but remember he's a secret federalist so political parties small interest groups that um, that type of democracy is what scares federalists, and that's what Madison is discussing. And I heard this idea coming up in different breakout rooms. We're now going to look at the anti-federalists, which are which is the Brutus One. Same thing. You are going to have six minutes to read and annotate and to fill out your chart. Please make sure you are being detailed in filling out this chart. 
it is going to impact how well you do on the exit ticket. And this exit ticket is getting graded on accuracy and quality. So six minutes to read Brutus 1. Go ahead and get started. seeing some great annotations. two and a half minutes. And remember, in the chart, you're answering the question, why do the Anti-Federalists not support this Constitution? Ninety more seconds. Shout out to Ariana for asking for specific feedback.
Time is up. Go ahead and finish up your final thoughts. So why does Brutus or the anti, why do Brutus or the anti-federalists disagree with the constitution? Can I hear from Erica and then Emmanuel and finally Lauren? Honestly, I'm not completely sure. I do not completely understand either of the readings. But from what I know, I think that the Bruis is saying that if we write down, um, like are the specific rights, the Bill of Rights and stuff like that, it'll cause people to argue over like extent in which that matters or not. First one was saying that we need a strong government to control political parties and make sure that they don't corrupt the government. Remember that, remember Brutus is anti-federalist and are the anti-federalists for or against the Bill of Rights? Against. The anti-federalists? Yeah, I thought the anti-federalists were for the people. And the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The federalists yeah. do not want yeah. the Bill of Rights. Okay, can I hear from Emmanuel and then Lauren? Um, okay, so I wrote down that the um, anti-federalists uh, don't want the Constitution because um, they mention how the federal government might like start abusing its um, power that it was that it has, and that I think they're kind of directly um, tying that back to when they were under um, British rule and how. They don't want it to become um, similar to a monarchy. And they also mention the size of the country and how that probably won't work with um, how many people are in the United States. Um, and just like different, how people have different views and if everyone's not on the same page, then it's not gonna really work out. Beautiful, and Lauren, if you're able to um, either build or um, corroborate what Emmanuel said. Lauren, are you there? She's having mic errors. Okay, thank you, Naziah. Um, Ariana, can you uh, contribute? Um, can you add your thoughts, please? Um, I was kind of. I mean, I just thought that he was trying to say that with the the power of the federal government, that's gonna like make people have to sacrifice like their liberties, being that the United States is like so big, and it's like. A representative is not gonna be able to like I guess grant everybody like what they want to happen so like some people might just feel like their ideas aren't being heard by the people who are supposed to be like representing them so yeah and uh, yeah, he's trying to also argue that it's not possible to have like a uh, accurate representation if it's so big so yeah exactly so uh, building off of what Emmanuel and both uh, both Emmanuel and Ariana said is the country is just too big to have one national government because the people in Delaware have different wants and desires and needs than the people in North Carolina because they are such uh, rapidly diverse people. So we are going to transition to today's exit ticket, but before we do so, I wanna clarify some instructions. So for the exit ticket, there is one multiple choice question and the rest is an open response. To be very, very clear, the open response does not have a correct answer. The open response is asking, is asking you how citizens should participate in the government. So you are answering with your opinion, but you have to use evidence from both Federalist 10, 10 and Brutus 1 to support your argument. So that is what I am grading you on is the type of support that are that you are using not your opinion or your not necessarily your response but how you're using that evidence yes isis okay since we have to use both documents can you go over 
um, the Federalist one, because I don't understand. I still don't understand what he's talking about. Yes. Okay, so the big thing with the Federalist 10 is, um, one, it encourages that elite democracy, that people who are the most fit should be the ones that run the government. And he also believes that this new type of government is going to control factions or political parties. So it's going to prevent small groups from um, overreaching or taking control over individual liberties. So he believes that um, it'll, it will control those, um, those groups of people from overtaking the government. And in Brutus, it says that um, the United States is too big and too diverse to, um, to be run with a national government. You need the smaller states in order to cater more to the wills of the people. So Federalist 10 says, we have the best of both worlds. We can use both local and large governments to protect the people, and this will help control factions. But Brutus 1 says that, no, the United States is too big and too diverse. Isis, does that answer your question? Yes. OK. We are going to transition to your exit ticket. Remember, you cannot leave until you submit the exit ticket. You have the remainder of class to complete. Again, for that open response, please make sure you are using both documents to justify your response. Thank you, Tisa. You may go.
Great question, Isis. Yes, please say um, in according to Brutus 1 or according to Federalist 10 when you introduce your evidence. Thank you, Aaron. You may go. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you, Nazaya. You may go. Before you submit, make sure you double check question one, the multiple choice. It needs to be accurate for both Federalist 10 and Brutus 1. So make sure you read both options. Sade, Isis, and Emmanuel, you may go. Thank you, Adarius, for um, asking me a question. I am, I'm just, it's just taking me a second to look at. Uh, Yamani, Nyasia, and Ziara, you, you may also go. Bye. Jamal, you may go.
Janiqua and Janaya, you may go. Erica, you may go. Casey and Dwayne, do you guys have any questions or are you just finishing up? Uh, Dwayne and Erica, I just got yours actually. Did you get mine? Yeah, Dwayne and Maddie, sorry, Maddie. No problem, have a good day. Thank you, Maddie, you too. Adarius, did that help answer your question? Casey, I just got yours. Adarius, are you there? Oh wait, I think I just, nope, that's not yours. Adarius, did that answer your question or do you have um, another one? I mean, it did answer my question. I meant to say, I didn't look at that part, but the executive branch. Mm -hmm. So are you going to pick uh, C or B? Um, B. There we go. So remember, it's that process of elimination, which is trying to find like the most right answer. So like, even though we know the Federalists like having a president, because Federalist 10 doesn't mention having a president, we know that's not the right answer. Does that make sense? Yeah. By the way, Ms. Somerville texted me today bragging about how well you're doing in creative writing. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. Well, she is noticing and I'm noticing. So you're doing a really great job this year so far. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any questions about the second question? Um, no. I started off I started off my answer so far. Then mm -hmm. I, I said that um Bruce Money wants to keep um the citizens of the um, liberty secure. Mm-hmm. And I said, Federalists tend to believe that most that the most fish should be able to control the government. Yeah, so like that's um, that's all accurate. The only other thing you need to do with that response is make sure you have your own opinion or your own voice in it. Does that make sense? So you need to say like which side you agree. With. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, but once you do that, that sounds perfect. I would say, I would say, if I would, I would go with the um, Buddhist pen. I would say, um, I'll give evidence on why that the people should have more of a voice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's perfect. You should say, like, people should, yeah, say exactly that. Okay. And then once you include that, that sounds good. All right. I might have some feedback on it, but there, but it's like feedback that I'll have to like write out to you but that sounds like you're answering the full question, which is what I'm grading you on. Mm 